Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of the Dark Table. New version of the Dark Table 4.2 has an additional tone mapper module that can be used instead of filmic. It's called Sigmoid and is developed by Jakob Andreen. In this episode, we will introduce and try out that new tone mapper module. So let's get started. Before we get into the topic, maybe we should first say a few words about what role a tone mapper module plays in Darktable. The main function of the tone mapper is to expand or contract dynamic range of the scene recorded by camera sensor to, be, to fit the dynamic range of the display. To be able to demonstrate that a little bit, I have prepared here a linear step gradient and I have also turned off the tone mapper so you can clearly see the waveform in the waveform here the uniform linear distribution of brightness from shadows to highlights. And let's see what happens now when we turn on one tone mapper, we can start with a filmic. If I enable filmic now, you can immediately see that he creates some kind of tone core with compressed highlights and shadows can also recognize it here and not so much the midtones. He actually tried to represent to some extent the tonal and color response of analog film like this one for example it was quite sim similar therefore also the name filmic. Okay but how can this be useful for us? Let's disable Filmic again for a moment. Ideally, your main subject should be somewhere in the mid-gray area. Let's say you want to take some portrait here, or a person should be somewhere here, in this area. You can see this um, patch here is in the mid-gray because it's the same like the surrounding. So you want to have your main subject there and the highlights and shadows are not so important. But often we don't have th that kind of situation. For example, if you want to shoot the portrait somewhere outside and you have a nice sunny day with some clouds here in the highlights and <coughs> you don't want to have your main subject in the direct sun, for example, if you want to have it somewhere in the shades a little bit. So you need to underexpose under your main subject to be able to get all this, those details in the highlights. For example, you, your person will be somewhere here, a little bit underexposed. So you need to uh, correct that afterwards by editing. So that means we need to um, bring our main subject, our portrait, in the mid-gray area here. We can do that with exposure module. And let's see what happens if I add some exposure until I have something like mid-gray here. Okay. Now our um, main subject is nice, nicely exposed. It's in the mid uh, uh, gray range, but we have lost all details in the sky. You can see we don't have any information about these patches which are overexposed. You can also recognize that in the waveform. And now wh when we uh, enable Filmic, he tries to compress that. Uh, highlights area and uh, we uh, can also adjust the film even more for example we can uh, increase the relative white exposure to get even more compression in the highlights 
but we don't have too much uh, contrast there. We have now all details, but not too much contrast. So uh, we can also go to the Look tab and reduce the overall contrast in the mid-grid. And now we see more details here. So now our main person, our portrait, is in the mid-grid, so it's nicely lit. And we'll have also some details here. What we also can do, we can use Thorn Equalizer and reduce the brightness of the highlights even more. Well, let me go there, even locally, something like that. Now we can add one more instance, for example, but without preservation of the details. So let's use Simple Tone Curve, also adjust uh, the histogram. And when we now add a little bit of um, brightness in the in the highlights, <coughs> now we can clearly recognize every patch again. And now our main subject is well lit, and we have also all details in the sky. We can, of course, even more correct it even more. Or let's say go back a little bit with relative light exposure and now we have um, compressed our scene to the display uh, dynamic range with all details that we want to have okay let's see how sigmoid behaves in this situation so let's begin with any adjustments first just turn the sigmoid module on and as you can see we have also some kind of core which is, which is quite similar to that core of the filmic it's not identical but quite similar and sigmoid is uh, has not too much options which it's quite simple which is also a nice point you have for the brightness you have contrast so let's see what happens if we add some contrast. So we have some kind of S-curve. And we also have that skew, which is additional contrast that can be shifted from to highlights or to, to the shadows. So let's try that. Now, you see we have now more, much more contrast in the highlights or in the opposite direction. Now we have some contrasts in additional contrasts in the shadows. So for example, if you have some uh, high dynamic range photo, you can remove the contrast here and add some contrast in the highlights and you will have immediately um, much more details in the highlights. Okay, so let's try that similar thing as with Filmic. Let's go to the Let's disable it again. So we have here our portrait and here are the clouds. So we will add some exposure to match the mid gray. Now let's see what happens when we enable sigmoid. Now, as you can see, we don't have too much control about. Uh, dynamic range here. We have contrast and skew sliders. Uh, we don't. We cannot compress additionally the highlights. So only thing which can we do that done can be done now is to remove the contrast a little bit here. Maybe add some skew. And we need to use tone equalizer to be able to. Um, darken a little bit the highlights and the same procedure as before for example like that and now we can use another instance simple tone core and add some contrast there or we can also use a bit skew and as you can see we have quite similar result like with filmic we have uh, 
nicely to the person or portrait and we have also all details in the sky. Okay, let's try that now in the real example. Okay, let's start with this one and I have used color calibration here to make some um, black and white version so that we concentrate ourselves only on the brightness <coughs> and I would like to um, brighten a little bit that chair here without losing the details in the highlights now if I do that without any tone mapper let's say we go about two exposure values higher something like that Oh, you can recognize we have lost a lot of details here on that um, uh, ground here where we have direct sunlight. So let's enable Filmic and see what happens. And immediately we have our details, details back. And we can also compress a little bit the highlights so that we have that kind of scene. And you can see, you can see uh, we have now more or less brightened this scene without losing too much details here. I can I think I can go even higher here, let's say about 2.8. Maybe compress it even more. So, and now when we compare before and after, it looks quite similar like this one. I hope you can recognize it a little bit. Let's make it a little smaller. You can see how Filmic mimic that uh, tonal range of analog film. We have underexposed area with details in the um, highlights here, similar like uh, this one here. So uh, what I mean is that is quite similar to this one. And if you brighten the scene, we're losing the details here, but still don't overexpose the scene. So it is really quite similar to that uh, analog film. Okay, let's see how sigmoid behaves in this situation. Now I have take snapshot of that version with a filmic. On the left is the filmic version, and now we will disable filmic and enable sigmoid and see what what the difference. And you can immediately see we have much more contrast in the mid gray here. If you see the chair, yeah. But we have less details in the highlights. Okay, let's see how can we improve that with sigmoid sliders. Okay, now we could go down a little bit with the co uh, contrast. Let's say something like that. And then now you can see it's quite similar to that version of the filming. Maybe we can also go down with the screw. Let's, let's play a little bit. See, uh, can we get some similar result? So, <coughs> As you can see, it will be quite difficult to get the results of the film. Now we have it, but we now need to add some additional contrast in the, the mid-gray if we uh, remove the contrast uh, of, the sig of the sigmoid module. So we have two options. We can add the contrast in color balance RGB, for example, here. And of course, correct that fulcrum. Or uh, we can use tone equalizer and go down a little bit with um, highlights. Let's see how far should we go. Maybe something like that. Let's compare it. And now we can add some contrast or go or, or with the skew slider higher. Let's see. 
Now you can see it's um, now we have quite similar situation. So um, when we're talking about the brightness, I will say Filmic has better options. Uh, it's, it's better for uh, compression the highlights. Or, uh, with another words, uh, you won't get a quick results if you have high dynamic range. You won't get quick results with sigmoid without touching other modules. It will be quite difficult to get it only with two sliders. So you will need to play around with others. Okay, but how it works uh, with another ex examples? Now we have a low dynamic range photo and I will try to develop this photo first with a filmic and then with a sigmoid independently. So let's start with filmic. This is how it looks without filmic. We will enable the filmic. It looks like that. And now we need to brighten the scene a little bit. So let's go with exposure a little bit higher. I don't know, maybe something like that. And we have now the possibilities to um, expand the dynamic range if we move the white relative exposure to the left and also black relative exposure to the right. So let's say something like that. But as you can see, it's not enough. <coughs> we can use a contrast slider, but I don't like it because it doesn't uh, make that nice contrast that I would like. So I will use color balance RGB to improve the colors and also the contrasts uh, um, additionally. Okay, so we need to give some saturation and shadows and midtones. Maybe go a bit more with pre uh, perceptual brilliance creating highlights and maybe go a little bit down with shadows there. <coughs> Maybe also a bit of global vibrance. And now we have a nice photo. So let's see how can we uh, get the similar result with Sigmoid. I have now snapshot with filmic version and we will now play with Sigmoid. So let's disable filmic, enable Sigmoid. And as you can see, uh, we already get some nice contrasts. So we need to go up with exposure. I don't know, let's say something like that. And as you can see, we have already a nice contrast, but we can increase that with contrast slider, let's say something like that, and compare it with filmic. And maybe also go with a skew a little bit up. And you see, we already, really quick, have nice res result with Sigmoid. And when we compare the contrasts, the Sigmoid tab has uh, softer contrasts in the shadows, what I, what I really like. It's not too harsh. <coughs> and also in the midtones. And as you can see, also the, the color preservation is quite nice. So we didn't need to touch too much anything else. We could though go with a color balance GB, maybe add some um, vibrance and so on. But in this case, we have quite nice and quick results with Sigmoid. We didn't need to touch too much other things. Okay, let's uh, see another example. Okay, we have uh, again one uh, photo with high dynamic, dynamic range, but this time with the color, so uh, we can compare those two tone mappers. So let's start with the filmic first. So I would like to add some exposure to brighten the scene. Let's go something like that. And maybe I would like to brighten it even more, so we'll use I don't want to go more with the exposure. Maybe I could compress a little bit the highlights here so that we don't lose them. And 
I will use Tone Equalizer. So I want preset. This kind of preset. Maybe adjust the exposure compensation and I would like to go a little bit down with highlights so that we don't lose the details in the clouds. Um, <coughs> now I need to use also color balance HGP to improve the contrasts a bit. So I will go with shadows a little bit down, add some saturation and more or less we are done with Filmic. Um, my version of Filmic has also, um, I, ha I have a disabled the pre preservation of chrominance. So let's see what happens if I add the standard power norm. And now we have also uh, a bit more colors in the highlights. So this is how a uh, filmic version looks like. I have all details now. I don't didn't lose any details in the highlights and I have nice um, contrast the mid grays. Maybe just a bit more contrast, let's say something like that. Okay, let's see uh, how can we achieve a similar result with Sigmoid. Okay, we will use now Sigmoid, Tone Mapper, and I have also uh, take a snapshot with a filmic version so that we can compare that. Okay, we go with exposure a bit up. Let's say something like that. And as you can see, we are losing the details in the highlights here. We need to do something for that. Uh, but before we do that, let's go with a tone equalizer. Let's use tone equalizer, similar like uh, the version with the filmic. I will also use that um, preset. And now I can also go back with the highlights so that we have a um, similar situation and we can we can improve it even better maybe add a bit more contrast in sigmoid tone equalizer even more down <coughs> and as you can see uh, we don't have too much colors in the highlights but it doesn't matter because sigmoid had two options about with color processing one is per channel and when we use NGB ratio we will have similar uh, preservation of chrominance like the filmic and now we can also use color balance AGB and add some saturation and we will have quite similar result so um, Okay, now let's see. Uh, let's use one more example. If you remember my last episode, when I was talking about how to improve the colors in the highlights, <coughs> I will do now the same edit, but with Sigmoid module. And I have prepared a snapshot of the edit from the last episode for comparison. So we will disable Filmic, enable Sigmoid and try to edit it similar like in the last episode. So first thing what I would like to do is to uh, white balance the photo and go somewhere in the middle something like that <coughs> excuse me and now we need to improve the overall look and uh, uh, the colors in the highlights by using color balance NGB. But before we do that, I would like to add some contrast with Sigmoid. And now we can go to color balance NGB and improve uh, the highlights and contrast a little bit more. So maybe I will go to maybe uh, go to the shadows a little bit. <coughs> and now go to the masks and adjust the masks first. So let me see what do we have here. Something like that. And now I would like to improve, maybe tighten a little bit the gray. Let me see. Something like that. And now we can go to the four-way tab 
and added a little bit of yellow to the highlights. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the mid-tones, a little bit orange, so that we have some that um, improve the sunlight color. So let's compare. Let's turn that on and compare that with a filmic. Oh, I think I need also to add the wax correction and denoising so that we have the similar. And now you can see we need to improve the contrast a little bit, so let's go again to the Yes, and also we can use Diffuse and Sharpen for clarity. And already looks uh, much nicer. <coughs> and now we also need Tone Equalizer just to brighten a little bit the um, uh, shadows. Maybe something like that. Uh, maybe not too much in the highlights. And now our photo looks even better. And must I must say, in this case, I like that look of the that uh, sigmoid module gives us. Maybe I can also go a little bit higher with the skew here without uh, losing the details. Yes. Okay, let's improve the mid middle middle part of the uh, flower, or well, similar like in the last episode. So I will use one more columns balance module, mask um, the middle part. I think I need to disable snapshot for this. So let's go back to be able to mask that part here. I would like to give it a little bit more uh, orangey uh, uh, or reddish color. Uh, I think it's wrong. Uh, I've used the wrong slider. Let's use this one. Okay, and improve the mask a little bit. A little bit less yellow, a bit more feathering. Doesn't need to be perfect just a tiny bit. <coughs> and now we can use four ways tab to improve the colors of that uh, middle ring of the flower. And now let's compare it again. Oh yes. It's much better. So for this example, I like much better the sigmoid because it, this uh, per channel color processing uh, works in this case extremely well. Now we can also use RGB ratio, ratio, and we will have quite similar uh, result with like filmic. But <coughs> per channel color preservation is much better in this case. As you can see, we have quite nice uh, colors in every area of the photo. So, what is my conclusion? I will say Sigmoid shines with its simplicity, good contrast from the beginning, and also good preservation of colors. Especially fast, it gives very good results when dealing with photos with low to medium dynamic range. Also, its uh, standard per-channel option of color preservation gives, in many cases, better results than filmic algorithms. Filmic, on the other hand, has its advantages when dealing with high dynamic range photos. Its uh, option of additional regulation of compression in highlights and shadows, contrast in the mid-grays, and choice of different color preservation algorithms can, under certain circumstances, give better results than the possibilities offered by Sigmoid. However, 
the filmic settings alone will never be enough to get good results. Additional saturation and contrast corrections, for example with a color balance RGB module, are almost always necessary. In the end, I can say that both modules with their advantages and disadvantages do their job very well and I see Sigmoid as a nice addition to the functionality of Darktable. So, with that I would like to conclude this episode and if you have some questions, please ask in the comment section or go to the uh, pixel.us um, uh, discussion forum and I will be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you for watching and until the next time.